about this, this word, personalisation. I think we're struggling with it. I think it was David Miliband who first, when he had his brief sojourn as the, the Secretary of State, he coined the phrase. And then we all got excited about it. And, you know, David Hargreave said, as the earth moved for you. I mean, do you know what it is? Because we're still struggling for it. Basically, do you fit the system to me or do you fit me to the system? It's as simple and as complex as that. And if you want to know whether your system is fitted to the children or whether you fit the children to your system, just shadow one of them round for a day. You'll find out at five past nine that there is a bit of an ancient lie around personalization, that we talk about it, but the first bell to go, that's the way you go, even though you don't want to. So we've got a challenge. That's a crisis of integrity, isn't it? We believe in personalization, we say it often enough, and then when you go into a school, what happens? Now I think, I don't want to intellectualize personalization. I'm going to give you a simple example that captured for me what I think personalization is. I stay in a lot of hotels, all over the world really, I'm kind of lucky. And uh, one of them was over in the States. And I always book an alarm call. I have to book an alarm call because I can't get up without one. Now, whenever you book an alarm call, it's automated. It's like a Dalek. This is your alarm call. Beep. And you get out of bed, you know. And I'm in uh, over in Texas. And uh, the alarm went in the morning. And I, I was still half asleep. And I picked it up, expecting a Dalek. And this voice said, hi, John. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi, John. It's John, isn't it? And I'm thinking, yeah, who's this? It's Wayne here, John. I am your alarm call. <laughs> Hello, Wayne. <laughs> now listen, John. He, started, he hasn't finished yet. He said, now listen, John. He said, I know you booked me for 7.30. And it's actually 7.15. I got you up a little bit earlier because I've got the mother of all breakfasts waiting for you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Wayne. It's a Texan breakfast, John. You're going to need more time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Thanks, Wayne. Now listen, John. He hasn't finished yet. He said, it's cold out there on the Savannah Plain. You make sure you take a sweater with you today because I don't want you taking a Texan chill back to little old England with you. <laughs> oh, uh, thanks, Wayne. That's very kind of you. You have a good day, John. Now, we are not good at this in, in our culture, are we? You go, okay, don't we? You know, when you say to somebody in Wakefield, you know, how are you? Do you know what they say? Fine. <laughs> Isn't that fine? Such a terrible word, isn't it? It's not as bad as mustn't grumble. <laughs> Just over the border in Lancashire, we say, keeping me head above water. You know, what a horrible image. The worst one is, not bad considering. <laughs> considering what? So I said, you have a good day too, Wayne. He said, I'm going to, John. And do you know what? He was going to. Do you know, I was wide awake. Do you know what he was doing? It's called inspiration. He breathed life into me. When normally I'm like a corpse at that time in the morning, I'm awake. I, go, I went down to, who did I want to meet? Wayne, where is he? <laughs> and I went to the management structure, all the photographs up there. Where's Wayne? He wasn't on there. Must be reception. Went rece He's not on reception. Where is he? Concierge. It's not the concierge. And then I heard a voice just outside the door going, I'm going to, sir. And I looked out and there was Wayne. Do you know, he was the lowest of the low in the food chain. He was the one who carried your suitcase from the car, the taxi, to the reception and kind of lived off tips. But there was only one person who filled that foyer. It was Wayne's World. I suspect that hotel chain, you know, had spent a fortune marketing the hotel. Everyone called it Wayne's Hotel. And he's the lowest of the low. But he had a sign where his little area was behind him. And it just said, the person standing in front of you now, Wayne, is the most important person in the world. And he lived it. That, to me, is personalizing behavior. And it's at the center of personalization. You stop seeing year five, year six, Key stage two, the boys, the girls. 
you start to see individual people. You never prioritize a piece of paper over a child. You don't know what that child is bringing to you. So that's personalization to me. It's actually quite simple. And you and I know when you're with a personalizing person, like Joan Bennett, it's like standing in front of a log fire in the middle of winter. When I'm with Joan, I feel good about myself. So personalization is fundamental.